Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the learning curve analysis. I'm pretty sure that at some point you learn about the learning curve and what does that mean? Simply put, it means the more you do something, the better you get at it, whether it's in sports, in studying for your exam, practicing a, a, a habit, whatever you are doing, the more you do of it, the faster, the more efficient you become. Well, let's move to the business world. When you learn about direct labor cost in your managerial accounting or cost accounting course, because we'll, we'll be applying the learning curve to actually accounting work, you are often presented that direct labor cost is act in a linear fashion, meaning for every additional input produce, the labor cost increases by the same amount. Linear. One, 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 one hour up, you know, $10, assuming the labor rate is $10. So, for example, if it takes two hours of labor to produce one unit and the labor cost is $20, producing two units will cost the company in labor cost as much as $40. And this important is information for the company because when they budget, they will need to know how much to budget for labor cost. When they prepare their strategic plans, how much is something's going to cost them? When they price a product, they have to include the labor cost. However, in the real world, costs often behave in a non-linear fashion. What does that mean? Well, it means as you produce more, there's a good chance that your labor cost, specifically your labor cost, will go down. Why? Because as workers perform the work more often, they will get better efficient at their task over time. And I hope this makes sense. As I told you at the beginning, the more you practice a task, the easier, the faster, the more proficient you become in that task. So the more unit they produce the faster they can complete each one, which means that while total labor cost may still increase, production cost rises. Of course, you're producing more, but the labor cost per one unit actually decrease. Now, when I teach managerial accounting or cost accounting, we always assume that direct labor varies in a linear fashion with production. It means it increases in the same proportion. Well, if it's $10 per direct labor, it will always stay at $10. Now, the total cost would increase. But what we're saying here is that $10 could decrease over time because it may take you one hour to complete the job, paying someone $10. As this individual becomes more efficient, they might complete the work in 45 minutes. Now, 45 minutes cost the company less than $10 because one hour equal to $10. 45 minutes, which is 0.75, will cost the company only $7.50. It means the labor cost per unit went down. So this reduction happens because employee improve through repetition, becoming more skills, requiring less time to complete each task. Now, this is, of course, in theory, because sometimes what happens if you have a high turnover in your employee, then the opposite would happen. Then you'll have to spend more time on labor costs to produce one unit, but that's not what we are discussing here. We're discussing the good thing, the learning curve. So this efficiency gain is described by the learning curve. As I mentioned at the beginning, you should be familiar with this learning curve because if you're studying for your CMA exam, CPA exam, the more questions you practice, for example, when you're trying to answer a multiple choice question, at the beginning, it might take you three minutes. Then as you practice more, it may take you two 0.5 minutes as as you practice more you want to go down for example to around a minute to answer the multiple choice question how do you improve this efficiency you prepare more you prepare more you do more questions you practice you practice more in this session we'll focus specifically on the learning curve analysis and this topic is covered in your cma course cpa course managerial accounting and cost accounting let's go ahead and get started before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Hello everyone. Are you struggling with your CMA exam preparation? Do you feel that your review course is moving too fast, too brief, or not covering topics in depth? Well, if that's the case, at Farhat Lectures, we can help you. We build your confidence through in-depth explanation not memorization or reading the slides. What we will do is we 
provide baby steps approach to break down complex topic so you can truly learn, understand the material. How do we do so? We offer video lectures, we offer practice MCQs, we offer true-false questions, we offer exercises, we offer the notes. Understanding the material is the first step in passing the exam. Once you understand the material, you have gained the confidence to pass, and you can pass with Farhat lectures. What can you do now? Start your free trial. You have a two-day free trial. Take a look at it. Give us a chance. Your risk is zero. You like it, you keep it. You don't like, you cancel. Give us a chance. We can help you pass the CMA exam. Just to kind of put the learning curve analysis into perspective, in business, in the real world, company uses learning curve to predict labor cost over time, especially for tasks that are initially complex, but becomes easier with repetition. When you're looking at, for example, factory line, initially, maybe the labor is go slowly, then as, as time goes by, with repetition, the, it gets better. Also, pricing strategy, because labor cost goes into your pricing. Firms can set pricing strategy by anticipating reduction in production cost as they move down the learning curve. And when you prepare a budget, learning curve analysis helps in budgeting for new project by accounting for the expected reduction in cost as worker becomes more efficient. And this is important because as we do variances and we learn about variances well sometimes we say we have a favorable variance why do you have a favorable variance it could be because of the learning curve our labor is getting better so what do we need to do we need to change our standard if that happens so in performance improvement the learning curve analysis helps in identifying areas where training or process improvement can increase efficiencies. So let's take a look at some key co components of the learning curve before we dive into an example with numbers to start to illustrate this concept. So there's a cumulative improvement here as workers or teams perform tasks repeatedly, they learn more from their experience, they become faster and more efficient, and the learning curves will quantify for us this relationship percentage improvement. Now, when we are discussing the learning curve, typically a learning curve assume a certain percentage reduction in time or effort each time the cumulative output doubles. So what we say is, we say every time we double, we should be double production, whatever we are producing, the learning curve should get better. For example, an 80% is a typical one, but it could be 75% learning curve, 80, 85, 95, it doesn't matter. An 80% learning curve means that every time production doubles, and again, we always assume this happens when the production double, this time requires decrease to 80% of the previous cycle. So as you double production, 80% required to 80% of the previous cycle. So if you were spending 10 hours, now you need eight hours on the process. Now, what are the limitation here? Let's talk about the limitation. First of all, when you are budgeting this information, it's hard to predict what percentage. Here we're saying 80%. That's hard to predict. Or when you find out it's 80%, it will be too late because the next cycle will start. You might have new employees. Things will change. Learning rate, this is the rate at, at which efficiency improve. And the steeper the curve, so when you're looking at the curve, we're going to look at the curve shortly the quicker the improvement so a slower learning rate would have a flatter curve indicating a slower progress so what am i talking about when i talk about the curve the learning curve is usually represented gra graphically with cumulative unit produced on the x-axis so units and the x-axis units produce and time or cost per unit on the y-axis and it looks something like this so so as you produce more as you produce more, you, requ you require less time or less money. But at some point, that line will flatten. You cannot reduce it down to zero. Obviously, it means you are not consuming anything. You would still consume some time and some money, but it gets better. So the curve slopes downward as efficiency improves with each unit produced. So we have a downward slope. Hold on a second. I just said downward slope. Before we proceed, I want to look. I want to talk to you about an upward curve because I want you to make sure then when we're looking at this information you have some comfort some good understanding of it so here's what I'm going to do to show you what's happening here let's assume I am reading a chapter I'm reading a chapter 
and a textbook. And this textbook has 10 chapters. And each chapter builds on the previous chapter. So as I read the first chapter, I can go faster in the next chapter. So that's the nature of the book. So just to kind of give you an idea what's happening. So I set my, you know, I set, I, I open my iPhone and I set, okay, I'm going to go to the time and I'm going to start the time and it, the timer will start. So the timer will start and I'm going to measure how long it's going to take me to read the first chapter. So I read the first chapter. So this is rather than unit a chapter and it took me 100 minutes. So the first chapter, it took me 100 minutes right here. I took a break, I started the second chapter. The second chapter, by the time I'm done with the second chapter, I, I did not reset my timer. I kept my timer at 100 and I started it again. By the time I finished the second chapter, it took me around 100, by the second chapter, around 190 minutes. Again, I paused, I paused the timer until I got to the third chapter. I started the third chapter and I finished it and I looked at my timer, it was two, a 271 minute. Those are cumulative, right? Cumulative. I'm not resetting my timer. It keeps running, but I pause it until I start the fourth chapter. The fourth chapter, it's it took me 343. The fifth chapter took me 409, 468, 521, 569. And notice what's happening. The curve is flattening. So the first thing I want you to see is, I hope you can see this from the first one that it took me between the, uh, the difference between the first and second chapter, it took me 10% less or 10 minutes less to finish the first, the second chapter. And if you look from the, from the second to the third chapter, it took me less than 90 minutes to read. And notice it's getting better and better. And we're going to look, look at this quantitatively. I just want you to look at an example where you can start to relate to this. Now, if every chapter, if every chapter was taking me, if every chapter was, if chapter two was taking me uh, 100 minute, another 100 minute, the, the line will be a little bit more steeper. Okay, why? Because it's taken me, but now notice it's flattening. It's, it means I'm getting more efficient. But this is not what we are discussing. When I said the downward slope, this is the da downward slope that usually you need to be familiar with. I just showed you this example because once I show you the, the, da the, da the downward slope, I want you to understand where the data is coming from. So this is the data that we used on the prior slide where we looked at each chapter taking 90 minutes, the f uh, 100 minutes, the first chapter, second chapter, so on and so forth. Now what I did is, I took chapter one, I said it took me 100 minutes to read chapter one. So chapter one took me 100 minutes. Chapter two, it took me 90 minutes. Chapter three, it took me 81 minutes. Chapter four, it took me 72 minutes. So on and so forth, at some point I flatten. So the maximum I can do as soon as I get to chapter 10, I can finish the last chapter with 38.74 minutes. And that's at every chapter 11, 12, that's, that's all what I can do. I can finish it around 40 minutes. So it, it eventually it flattened, it will never hit the X axis. Now, maybe if you're a mathematically inclined person, you can see that I am improving or my improving rate is, is 90%. So every time I do this, I am improving by 90%. Why? Because if I took 100 times 90%, the second chapter, it only took me 90 minutes. If I took the, the second chapter and I build my efficiency on it at a 90% rate, chapter three will take me 81. If I did the same thing from chapter three to chapter four and I improved by 90%, it's taken me 72.9, so on and so forth. So here the, the my efficiency rate or the learning curve is 90%. Now this could be 80%, this could be, uh, it could be any rate. Now again, the steeper it is, the, the, the faster it falls, the, the, the better off I am. It means I, I am taking less time. So if, if we said 80%, 80%, if my rate, if my efficiency rate is 80%, again, I'm, I'm talking about reading, but think about production in the real world. If it's 80%, then chapter two will take me only 80 minutes to read. Well, the, the, the faster, the, so chapter two will be here. So the slope would look something like this. Uh, whoops. It would look something like this. So it's a steeper. So the steeper it is, the better off I am. But let me show you exactly what you need to know 
terms, terminology using this example. So for this example, we're going to be using a learning curve of 80 percent. I want you to ignore what's in here. I'm going to go over each column separately. I'm going to go over each column separately. I'm going to spend a lot of time here on the cumulative average time per unit. And I want you to understand this column, column C, before we proceed to column D and column E. Because as a CPA candidate, or what you need to know is you need to know the cumulative average time per unit, the cumulative total time, time spent on the most recent unit. So those are the typical questions that you have to deal with. So in this session, I'm going to use this example after I lay down the theoretical background so you have a good understanding that the more you do, the better, the better you get at it. Now I'm going to use an example illustrating this concept. So starting with the first unit or the first batch, unit one, there's only one unit in this batch. So the cumulative unit produce is one unit. It took me 100 minutes to produce that unit. What is 100 minutes? It means the first unit I completed, it took me 100 minutes. Now the second unit I doubled. I went from one to two. One to two is doubling doubling. When I doubled, we said there's an 80% efficiency rate or learning curve. It took me only 80 minutes to finish this. 80 minutes on average. So what is the 80 minutes? So the 80 minutes, it's the cumulative average time per unit. Now this is important to understand what does it mean the cumulative average time. And notice I highlighted in yellow because once you understand column C, it's easy to go to, to figure out D and C. The cumulative average time per unit means that the, that the time shown is the average time taken to produce each unit from the very first unit up to the most recent one in the batch. Okay, again, what does that mean? Let's keep going. Then I doubled again. I went from two to four units. I doubled again. As I doubled, my cumulative average per unit is cut down by 80%. How, how do I cut it down by 80%? It's 80 times 80% equal to 64. So this 80%, the first 80% is 100 times 80%. So to get the 64, it's the prior minutes, 80 times 80%, 64. Let me go from four units as I produce from four to eight units. If I produce from four to eight units, I go from, I take 64 times 80% and I get to 51.2, 51.2. Again, as I double from eight to 16, I will take 51.2 times 80%. And now my cumulative average time per unit is 40.96. Now, let me ask you this question. If I ask you to interpret this 51.2, how do you interpret this 51.2? It's the cumulative average time per unit when we get to unit eight. What does that mean? Very important. Here's what it means. If you have made eight unit and the cumulative average is 51.2, it means on average, each of those units took 51.2 hours to produce, even though earlier units might have taken longer and later unit less. What does that mean? It means when you are producing those, when you get to this eight units, your cumulative average time per unit is 51. It means on average, those eight units on average took you each one of them 51.2, not the eighth unit, not this unit. We're going to figure out how much you are, how much time you are spending on the eighth unit. But on average, the cumulative, the first eight unit on average, on average, it took you per unit 51.2 minutes. Now, obviously you would know that one of those eight units took you 100 minutes. The second, uh, the second unit took you less than the fourth took you less and the eighth took you less. So on average, if you average them all, it's 51.2. So please know, I know I keep, I'm, you're going to see why I'm, I keep, I keep on emphasizing this. The cumulative average means if we go back to four, it means here when we produce the cumulative unit produced is four. What does 64 means? It means the four units that we produce up to this point on average, on average, each one took 64 minutes. It doesn't mean 
any particular one that took 64 minutes on average all four took 64 minutes so that's very important and you're gonna see how uh, why is this important and the average gets smaller as you produce more unit and as you are becoming more efficient obviously it's getting smaller because as you produce more you're becoming more efficient now are we all on the same page the cumulative average time per unit that's very important so it's not how long it took you to produce that unit it's how how long it took you to produce those unit up to this point on average now let's move to the now we're done hopefully we're done with this let's look at this column the cumulative total time how do we compute the cumulative total time column the cumulative total time we'll take column b times column C so 1 times 100 2, 2 times 80 so on and so forth so we all know what cumulative unit produce how many units you produce thus far and we should all know what's the cumulative average time spent now we need to compute what's the cumulative total time because sometimes they might ask you what's the cumulative total time as you produce unit 4 well let's see how we can how we compute this and how how do we interpret this so obviously if you produce one unit and it took you 100 minute well what's the cumulative time so far well one one times 100 equal to 100 minute what we're saying here is this as you produce two unit please listen to me carefully on average you spend 80 minutes per unit listen to me carefully this is this is important so this is 80 units this is what you spent on average up to those two units well if I spent on average 80 80 minutes 2 times 80 so far I spent 160 cumulative as I got to unit 2 as I got to unit 4 we computed on average I'm spending 64 minutes and we all know how we got that the 64 80 times 80 percent I'm becoming more efficient as I double so my cumulative total time is 256 same concept I spend I doubled again my cumulative average went down I produce eight unit on average 51.2 my cumulative time is 409.6 so you might be asked to know what's your cumulative time as you got to eight unit well you have to compute that you have to compute your cumulative average time per unit multiplied by how many unit you uh, you cumulatively produce at that point so the cumulative time is essentially the sum of the time taken to produce all the units from the beginning up to the most recent one in that batch it reflect the total amount of time spent on the production process once again those 80 64 51 none of them are the amount specifically you spent on on producing a particular unit the only one is the one unit because you spent you you produce one unit on average it's 100 but by the time you get to two you cannot say the second unit I produced I I I, I produced that unit using 80 minutes on average the sec by the end by, by the time you produce the second unit on average it's taking you 80 minutes per per unit so this is the cumulative total time now we're gonna look at total spent on the most recent unit because that's what they would ask you also on the CMA exam how long it took you to produce unit 4 how long it took you let's see how we compute this so now we we all know how to compute the cumulative average time per unit the cumulative total time now let's compute the total time spent so the first unit took 100 hour to produce so the value in column E is 100 hours that's easy the first unit is you produce one unit you spent 100 minutes the cumulative time 100 minutes the time spent on that unit is 100 the cumulative unit produced when you get to when you produce the second unit the cumulative average time is 80 therefore you spent in total time 160 minutes so now here's what I can tell you how long you spent on that second unit well on average if I if I produce two units on average it took me 80 minutes to produce each unit I have 160 minutes in total cumulative time and I know I spend 100 minute on the first unit what's left for me is 60 minutes so if you are asked what is the total spent on the next unit it's 60 minutes and it has to be way less than 80 why because if the average is 80 
and the prior production time was 100 well to come up to 80 to come up to 60 it has to be less than 80 it has to be less than 80 so the second unit took 60 hours to produce which is pretty straightforward to compute or how how can I do this how, how else can I do this 100 and 60 the cumulative well this is what I did minus 60 and I produce one unit okay so so if I take once let's do it again 160 minus 100 is 60 and I produce one unit divided by one unit 60 now let's look when we went from 2 to 4 okay now we know this this is easy the, 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 the second one it should be easy it should be intuitive but let's look at let's look at batch 3 batch 3 the time spent is 48 minutes I want you to pause and see if you can find the 48 minutes okay well this can be calculated in a similar fashion here's what you do it took you 256 minutes in total 256 up to the cumulative unit produce 4 minus the total amount spent before the total amount of time spent before 160 what's left is 96 so you have four units now we are working let me highlight this level you are working at this level you are working at this level at this level you have four units four units you know the prior two units so of the four units for the minus two the prior two the prior Two. the prior two took you 160 minutes and so far you have 256 well if, if my cumulative total is 256 and 160 minutes were for the prior p2 prior two, what's left is 96 unit for those new two unit because I went from two to four so if I'm talking 96 minutes additional minutes and I produce two units it means my average cost per unit for the most recent unit is 48 it has to be less because the average is 64 it has to be less than 64 because all the units prior to that were you know 60 and 100 so and also 80 the average so it has to be less and it's 48 can you compute this 38.4 which is the fourth batch when we have the cumulative unit produce eight okay let's take a look at it same thing how do I do that I'll take my total cumulative up to that point which is I know how to do this the cumulative times the cumulative average time per unit 409 minus the prior minus 256 what I'm left with is 153.6 additional minutes and on those six 153.6 additional minutes I produced four additional units if I take those 153.6 and I divide it by four on average not on average time spent on each unit on the most recent unit also on average some could take longer some could take shorter as well 38.4 so the time spent on the most recent unit was 38.4 minutes okay can you do the last one I hope you know how to do this we'll take 655.36 minus 409.6 minus the most recent and that's going to give us 245.76 additional not units additional minutes the company experience or the company the company labor consumed and do, during those 245.6 additional minutes we produce an additional eight units it means we spent 30.72 on the most 30.72 minutes on those additional eight units of course it has to be less than the average because I'm pull because up to this point was 50 60 some I'm not 50 60 well if you want to the most recent unit were 38 48 60 and 100 to have an average of cumulative average of 40 I must have really produce at a lower than 40 which is 30.72 and I and I produced eight units at that rate that's why it pulled my average down so time spent on the most recent unit is something that they will ask you now how would you 
learn about this how would you practice this well you can go to Farhat lectures look at MCQs at Farhat lectures to practice this also I'm gonna have four to five video MCQs specifically about this topic to work actual sample actual exercises how to find the time spent on the most recent unit how to find the cumulative average time per unit the more you practice especially if you're studying for your CPA exam the better off you can you, you become so I will work four or five um, multiple choice questions in the next session invest in yourself Farhat lectures is always here to help and of course stay safe